The Chinese entertainment industry has numerous problems that negatively impact both performers and productions. Slave contracts Asian talent agencies are famous for tying actors and idols down with unfair, long-term contracts known as slave contracts. In 2014, Dilraba Dilmarat signed a 15-year contract with Jay Walk Studio. Dilraba's contract reportedly limits her freedom to choose projects, leading to typecasting in idol dramas and working repeatedly with the same male co-stars. Su Jingxi recently announced his departure from acting due to disagreements with his management company. He felt pressured into projects he didn't want to be part of and faced a heavy workload without adequate rest. Despite seeking to terminate his contract, his management company refused to release him, resulting in sour relations. Huan Yu film owner Yu Zheng's influence over Su Kai's career is evident, as he has admitted to filtering through Su Kai's script options based on his own benefit, even if it meant sacrificing Su Kai's screen time or pay. Song Wei Long has been battling to end his contract with Yu Zheng's agency since 2022, but without success. Allegedly, Yu Zheng has sidelined him and denied him work until his contract expires as punishment. Mistreatment of Animals Many Chinese productions don't follow their own claims of not harming animals. In one instance, a horse was intentionally tripped during a battle scene in the first episode of the popular drama Who Rules the World, shocking viewers as it fell and injured its neck. Of course the production was quick to explain away the situation claiming that the horse was doing just fine but many viewers were not convinced. Scenes in Story of Ming Lan and Legend of Xiao Chuo also depict horses subjected to harsh falls, possibly facilitated by tripwires, raising concerns about their welfare. The demanding conditions for stunt horses at Hengian Film Studios, coupled with inadequate safety measures for both horses and actors during riding scenes, are concerning. Additionally, the poor condition and mistreatment of many horses, particularly carriage horses, raise further alarm. During a live stream, Liu Yuning admitted that he feared riding the horses at Hengian. When we film period shows, we really do fear horse riding because the horses at Hengian aren't really expensive breeds, so their personalities aren't very stable too. They're worked for long hours without food or water when filming, so they're never in a good mood, so it's dangerous. Body Issues and Eating Disorders in the Chinese entertainment industry, the ideal compliment is to praise someone for looking white and skinny, leading to widespread use of skin lightening products and contributing to eating disorders. Production companies exacerbate these issues by pressuring actors to adhere to strict diets before and during filming. Producer Yuxing faced criticism for urging actress Zhao Qing to lose over 4 kilograms, despite her already being underweight at 46 kilograms and 1.7 meters tall. Esther Yu admitted to being pressured to lose weight before filming My Journey to You, with Esther revealing that the director bombarded her with messages, promising gifts if she reached 45 kilograms. During a show, Xiao Zhan, who was 183 centimeters tall and weighed 75 kilograms at the time, was instructed to diet. He took this seriously, and by the end of filming for The Untamed, he had dropped to 56 kilograms, prompting his co-stars to remind him to eat. Bai Lu agrees that the standards for looking thin are sky high. Bai Lu, during Till the End of the Moon, reached her lowest weight in years at 42 kilograms. Ching Yi mentioned eating only an apple for dinner while filming. Ching Xuan's extreme water fast led to her weight dropping to 38 kilograms. When Ma Si Chen filmed The Left Eye she was told to lose 12 kilograms in 20 days. Lack of Diversity China's entertainment industry struggles with diversity despite the country's rich ethnic tapestry. The dominance of the Han population, representing over 92% of the total populace, means that ethnic minorities face significant challenges in gaining recognition. This imbalance is evident in the scarcity of notable minority actors, as highlighted in a South China Morning Post article which identified only eight popular figures, including Dolraba and Gulanaza of Uyghur descent, along with Wu Jing, who is Manchurian. Also, while some Chinese dramas may feature Caucasian actors, it's rare to see other races represented, with only a few exceptions like The Longest Day in Chang'an and Once Upon a Time in Lingjian Mountain that included black actors in minor roles. Additionally, due to China's laws, dramas rarely cater to different sexual orientations, as homosexuality remains illegal. In 2016, The Boys Love Drama Addicted was swiftly pulled from streaming sites and its two lead actors were banned from appearing together on television or any event in China. Ageism 
Female Chinese actresses face discrimination in the entertainment industry as they age, often limited to roles like mothers and grandmothers despite being relatively young. This inequality is starkly illustrated by actresses like Yang Rong, who expresses frustration at the pressure to maintain a youthful image in her 40s, and Qi Shi, who found skirts scarce after turning 31. Thus to escape this discrimination some actresses have taken to changing their birth years as they go. For instance, Zhang Tianai's reported age has fluctuated over time. Initially listed as born in 1988, it later changed to 1990, and then to 1992. Wang Liquan's age was initially a topic of speculation due to her official birth year being listed as 1979. However, she later adjusted it to 1985, even celebrating her 30th birthday in 2015, despite earlier indications suggesting she was born in 1979. Similarly, Tang Yan's reported age changed from 1983 to 1986 and then 1987, before returning to 1983 after scrutiny. The emergence of younger actresses like Liu Haosuin, facing age controversies early in their careers, highlights ongoing age-related anxieties in the industry. The dreaded casting couch The term casting couch belies the grim reality of one of the entertainment industry's most disturbing phenomena. In 2006, actress Xiao Qiong made allegations against CCTV director Yang Yichao, claiming he insinuated she could secure a lead role in Painter Village if she engaged in a sexual relationship with him. She lost the opportunity for the role. Yang Yichao refuted the accusations, attributing Zhao's loss to her appearance. Actress Zhang Yu caused a stir in 2003 by accusing prominent directors of soliciting sexual favors from actresses in return for casting opportunities. Zhang provided audio and video evidence implicating herself and others in such transactions with influential figures. Jeffrey Su's accusations of harassment during a drama class organized by Taiwanese director Wang Shadi are deeply concerning. One student reported that he made inappropriate comments suggesting sexual interest and pressured her to engage in simulated group sex. Actress Tani Huang also came forward, alleging harassment from Jeffrey about 10 years ago, during which he made lewd comments, pressured her to wear revealing clothing, and subjected her to uncomfortable situations. Another actress, who Xiani, also known as Sammy, disclosed her encounter with Jeffrey, where he coerced her into removing her shirt under the guise of an audition for a lead role, making inappropriate remarks about her body. Predators galore Chinese actresses have courageously spoken out against inappropriate behavior from men in the industry, revealing a widespread disregard for personal boundaries. The tragic case of Yami Lam, who passed away in 2018, further illustrates the mistreatment women endure at the hands of influential men. Yami Lam's career at TVB began at the age of 20, where she faced clashes with bosses and refused roles, particularly erotic ones, leading to her blacklisting in 1984. By 2006, she declared bankruptcy and relied on government welfare. In 2013, Lam revealed in a leaked video that she had been raped by two prominent figures in the industry, Eric Sang and Alan Tang Kwong Wing. Sang denied the allegations and sued Lam's supporter Grace Han for defamation. Despite Lam's allegations and Han's claims of Chang's repeated sexual assaults, no investigations were launched against the accused men. Lam's mental health issues cast doubt on her claims, and her subsequent death further complicated the case. The lack of accountability and the dismissal of her allegations reflect the entrenched power dynamics and mistreatment faced by women in the industry. Jiang Xin also exposed a troubling trend in the entertainment industry where CEOs and investors would select actresses based on their appearance, often displaying their photos on their desks. This led to actresses enduring disrespectful comments about their bodies and enduring degrading auditions. Even top talents like Yang Mi faced inappropriate behavior from directors, with one incident involving a director visiting her in the middle of the night with ulterior motives, resulting in her scenes being cut when she refused. Similarly, Chi Wei faced advances from an assistant director, resulting in the cancellation of a scene she had worked hard on. Banning in 2014, the NRTA banned celebrities linked to drug use or prostitution from state television and other media outlets. Those blacklisted by government bodies for scandals like tax evasion or sexual assault may have their scenes cut, faces swapped digitally, or filmography removed from syndication and streaming services. One notable case was that of Fan Bingbing in 2018, who faced government action due to tax evasion allegations, resulting in her being effectively wiped out from the entertainment industry. 
Chris Wu, accused of grooming underage girls and pressuring women into sex in 2021, denied the allegations but was arrested and sentenced to 13 years in prison. He also faced financial penalties, including a hefty tax bill of $84 million, and will be deported to Canada after serving his sentence. Kaiko faced a career setback after his arrest for drug possession in 2014. Despite a tearful apology, his career has not fully recovered. Fu Yue, an award-winning actress, was arrested for drug-related offenses in 2016, leading to her withdrawal from the entertainment industry. Li Xiaolu's extramarital affair in 2017 led to public backlash and a divorce, impacting her career despite remaining active on social media. Huang Haiba's arrest for soliciting a prostitute in 2014 marked the end of his mainland China career, although he maintains a presence on social media. Ching Shuang's involvement in a surrogacy scandal led to boycotts and financial difficulties, prompting her move to the U.S. Zhang Jahan faced backlash for visiting controversial Japanese shrines, leading to contract terminations and social media accounts closures. Deng Luan's tax evasion scandal severely damaged his reputation and resulted in the termination of brand contracts and the closure of his social media accounts. What do you think about these issues? Let me know in the comments.